My guest today is Ray Lane. He is a managing partner at Venture Capital Powerhouse Kleiner Perkins Caulfield and Byers in Menlo Park, California. And before joining uh, Kleiner Perkins, he was the president and COO of Oracle. He is also the non-executive chairman of the board at uh, Fisker Automobiles. And in that capacity, recently took delivery of one of the first 100 Karma electric hybrids. And that's what we want to talk to him about today. Uh, Ray, welcome to our EV world. Thank you, Bill. It's good to be here. It is a pleasure to be able to talk to you. I know we chatted briefly uh, back in Detroit a couple of years ago. And uh, now that you got your car, I said I have to, I have to talk to you and see, see what you think about it. So the first question we need to know when we're dying to ask is, what's it like? Uh, it's a fantastic experience. I mean, I've enjoyed driving it every day. It is an everyday car, and I think that's uh, really, really important that I'm comfortable driving it. It fits my driving style, but I'm comfortable uh, uh, utilizing it without having to change my behavior, although I have to admit it does. Driving an EV does change your behavior. I find myself managing the battery. Yeah. When in this car, it should be just the opposite. I should be using the battery as much as I can to save you know the use of the engine. So I don't want to use gasoline, but I find myself being in EV mode, wanting to <laughs> save that battery. And I, I shouldn't care because I have right. 50, I have 50 miles on the battery, and then the engine takes over and will create enough electricity to drive the car. It's still an EV. It's all one powertrain. Right. But the uh, uh, I can go another 250 miles if I want to, so I don't have to worry about the range, but it's really, really weird. You get in an EV and you start having that mentality right. of, of uh, managing your capacity. And, but uh, the, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a real sedan, so it has the, the, the comfort, the size, uh, the, uh, the, all of the appointments, uh, and the weight, the, the bulkiness, you know, the, the, the sturdiness of a sedan, of a real four-seater sedan. So I think, you know, having driven Mercedes and BMWs, I would be very comfortable transferring from that car into the Karma. Uh, driving a Porsche, I'm very comfortable moving to a Karma because I get the sporty right. feeling. I get the good handling with the low CG and the wide footprint, I get a very good sporty feeling with it. So I really like the fact that it's both a sports vehicle and a sedan, a luxury sedan, and that kind of fits what I want. Right. Now, I understand you you own several cars. I think one like a Jeep Cherokee or something and a, the Porsche you mentioned. Uh, how does this, uh, how does this, the, those vehicles uh, now get relegated to the, uh, the back of the garage, or, or how do you see this unfolding for you? I think I would drive the Karma every day. Uh, I don't. There's no reason that I wouldn't. Uh, you know, a Porsche is a Porsche. When you have a 911, most 911 owners are uh, a cult, and you like to get in that little go kart and yeah. and just go. Uh, I think the um, you know I I do own an old Ferrari which doesn't get taken out very often and I think that car will be out less often now because it's a struggle. It's not as much fun to drive every day. Uh, you need to be on a certain type of highway. Uh, the Jeep I'll still drive a lot because that's the only dog that, or the only uh, car that my dog is allowed to be yeah, in. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Um, so typically what's your routine there? You get it at home at night? What do you have charging wise? Do you... Uh... I I have the I have the 110 charger that's uh, that comes with the car. Okay. So um, I as soon as I get home at night, I plug it in. It's uh, there's a there's a wall outlet right next to the car. It's very convenient, just hanging there. I just walk around, plug it in, and the next morning it's charged. Yeah. Now, what's your normal length of your commute? I mean, how much do you do from home to work and back then? Um, my my uh, office is probably about three to four miles from okay. the house, so 10 miles a day. So having a 110 is, is plenty sufficient, then sounds, uh, sounds like it. Yeah, once or twice I've gotten down to maybe five or 10 miles in the battery, and all night is sufficient time to recharge the battery back to 50 miles. Okay, interesting on 110. That's, that, that's, uh, yeah, I wouldn't expect that because you, I would think that you'd probably want to go with the 
the level two charging, but uh, yeah, I might. I, so I I'm actually have a house that's being constructed across the street from my house. It's kind of a guest house, and, and I've built a garage there that's going to have a 220 uh, ah, charge okay. in it. So that'll be a faster charge, and I may I may keep it down there. But so far, I've had no inconvenience with a 110 charger because I will let it I will let it charge all night. I know that if I do run out of juice, I at least have the engine behind right. it. So. It, the mentality of a of, of this thing we call electric vehicle with extended range is much different than you would have with an electric vehicle. So I've been asked, you know, by one company, do you want us to put a charger in at your office? We'd love to kind of show off. And sure. Charge. I said I don't care. I said yeah. I don't care. And, and and do you look for charging stations? I said no, because charging stations don't do me any good. If I have to stop, I'd have to stop for hours to do any good. Right. So I basically want to use the house, and that's it. Yeah. And, and, and then hopefully I start every morning with 50 miles in my battery, and I know I have another 250 or 300 miles in the gas tank, and I will go from driving cars that are probably 15, 16 miles per gallon to a car that gets over 100 miles per gallon. Right. I use gas. I may never use gas if I don't go outside my daily commute. Yeah, how much is in your tank, by the way, just out of curiosity? Uh, you mean actually in my tank yeah. or the tank size? Yeah, no, in the in the gas tank at, at the moment. Just uh, It's pretty full. It's pretty it's full, about, okay. That's like seven-eighths or something. Right. I don't know if I've used much at all. Right. Yeah. Well, let's, let's sort of, for people who aren't familiar with Kleiner Perkins, why don't you sort of give us a, a quick over, <coughs> excuse me, a quick overview of uh, what, who Kleiner Perkins is. Okay, so Kleiner Perkins is a venture capital firm. We're 40 years old. We're one of the first, if not the first, in the business. Uh, our first fund uh, included companies like Genentech. Right, we right. invest in uh, very early stage entrepreneurs and companies that are wrapped around some technological innovation. So that happens in the IT world. <clears throat> so in, we call it digital technologies. It happens in green tech and it happens in biotech. Right. So we have three practices today that invest in early stage companies that are uh, uh, bringing those technologies, those disruptive technologies to the marketplace. So we take, we take maximum risk, so we're starting out typically like Fisker, we started out, came in their B round, they only had, had attracted five million dollars, that five million dollars allowed Henrik to design the car and figure out a plan and then he had to go out for the B level money which was a larger round. We led the B round okay. so we're taking a lot of risk. All the capital sitting ahead of us, all the engineering sitting ahead of us, certainly all the market risk is sitting ahead of us but that's what we like to do. Right. Uh, so typically we have a view that every fund we have uh, we're gonna have probably 40 very diverse technology companies in it and of those 40, maybe 10 are big successes. Right. Okay. Well, the, the reason I ask that is because, you know, in the 90s, you were doing a lot of the, uh, the gen techs and, and the, the digital investing. And right. it seems like Fisker was somewhat of a change for you because now you're getting into not necessarily brick and mortar, but you are getting into a more hardware-oriented um, investment. And then of late here, I see there's been a lot of talk about uh, you know, you getting back more into investing in more of the IT, uh, cloud computing, and that yeah. type of thing. Yeah, the me the media is very very consistent. They are always wrong. Always. <laughs>